Besser one go. Hey, how's Morning. it? It's a beautiful morning this side. How are you doing, man? I'm oh, great, man. I'm oh, great. It's a beautiful yeah. night this side as well. Is it beautiful? Yeah, beautiful night sky, moon is out, stars are out. You know? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got Sandili. Ah, oh, Sandili, man. Uh uh good thing Sandile. Uh let's see. This is tall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hope you're good, brother. Uh well man, uh I remember on WhatsApp you mentioned that you're still studying this ebook. Is it fine if you go through it together? Sure, no problem. That'll be awesome. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay. So uh basically uh on this session I want us to cover you know entry and exit point. Okay, so you're gonna go through just entry and exit point, but uh what is important obviously we we'll talk about exits. And entry point, but just one quick question, guys. Uh, in terms of before we go through the lesson, what are some of your thoughts regarding the market? Like what what it can do, and why are you guys uh, interested into trading? Why are you learning trading and focusing on this? You know. Okay, of course, it's me, man. I, I gotta say that. Uh, I've been, I've been always amazed by economics. Okay. And the economy and how it works and these kind of various stuff, right? But uh, trading for me personally is, is much more than than just a get rich kind of yeah. scheme. It's like it's it's like trying to break that that financial you know generational gap that you know growing up I always yeah. wanted you know to achieve certain things, going to do it due to finances and these kind of stuff. So just wanna you know. Like make, set the path for for my generation to come, and just you know like lay the foundation for something to be built upon. And I see trading as an opportunity to get there, you know. Yeah. So it, it, it's 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 uh it's quite a journey, but it's only built for the strong, you know, not for the weak. All right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's good. Uh, suddenly I'm good, man. I'm very well, good. Well. Are you okay, sir? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, no, thanks, thanks, brother. Thanks for the session. It's uh, it's been it's been a lot of help. Um, well, as you know, um, I think quite a few years ago we had met, and unfortunately, I couldn't carry on. Yeah. So um, recently, um, I just got back and. I've realized that I get the crux of of the markets now, but the problem is I still struggle a bit with timing my trades because I I get the supply zone and and the demand zone. Uh, I can see the rallies. Mm -hmm. I can see the sellers exceed the buyers and all that, but the my problem is sometimes I either get in too early or I get in too late. And yeah. as you said in the session earlier that the big guys, they tend to hit maybe one last week or maybe two more weeks and then they go in the direction and it's very frustrating. So for me, what I can say is that I would really like to 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 get help in terms of timing and in terms of understanding when the big guys were saying, okay, now we are going in the direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's just get started with the session. I'm happy. I'm excited. Um, I'm very much, the reason I'm saying I'm excited is because August is one of those turnaround months, you know, uh, there was some, you know, news last after the last release of NFP that potentially in September we might see a cut in Fed, the Federal Reserve Bank in terms of the rates. So a lot of people were very much excited. Another reason that I'm excited is because I see a lot of hunger regarding the supply and demand trading system. Obviously, 
The supply trading system, obviously, if you don't understand the order flows, it might be a bit confusing. But once you understand it, that number one, okay, these are the five rules of SND in terms of uh, trading, okay? These are the five rules. And the five rules always is always look to the left, sell at supplies. So remember, the banks or the big institutions don't want to rush, don't want to rush trades. They don't like chasing the market. Therefore, you also do not want to chase the market. You want to wait for the price to come to a certain level, then you enter, okay? What is important is, how do you wait? You don't wait by watching the screen. Because <laughs> I know a lot of people just watch the screen and stare, and they stare, and they stare. If you wait like that, you're going to be frustrated, and you're going to start placing trades that are not necessary, that are not uh, in terms of high probability, okay? Secondly, understand that when you talk about supply zone or demand zone, uh, in terms of the bank traders, we are talking about the zone where there are a lot of orders in those places. You know, the only reason for a bank trader or institution to enter a trade is if they see orders. If there are no orders, if they want to sell, they need to see a lot of buy orders, which means they need to trick traders that right now is a time to for the market to go up and traders will start buying and then because they want to sell at that level, if the more orders are coming through for buy orders, then they can sell. You know, they give those spikes, they give those things because they're trying to trick you, okay? Uh, buy a demand zone. Always wait for a candle that is going opposite direction before you buy, meaning a candle that is dropping before you buy. A candle that is going upwards before you sell, because that is a candle that will trigger people. You know, uh, if you see a huge uh, spike or huge candle, remember, before a candle become a spike, it was a full candle, full on candle, big candle. People entered, buy, 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 and it, and, and you can see there is a supply zone. So, order flows. If there are a lot of orders coming through to the market. And then the bank traders is either they can bless their trade or they can take some profit. You know, they can do all those things, you know, but uh, most importantly, they can also wait. They can just wait for orders to come through. They give those patterns uh, while waiting. So also you should do the same thing. You should also learn how to wait. And then rule number four is always use a stop loss. The reason for a stop loss, you want to protect your capital. You don't want to lose all your money in one trade because you're trying to prove a point. The market that the market is going to prove you that the market is always right. You know, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about making a profit. It's about preserving your capital, you know. So always use a stop loss to protect your capital. But remember, a bank or institution traders, what they will do, they will always target your stop loss. You know, whenever you place a trade, just think about this. Where are you going to place your stop loss? Where will a lot of traders place their stop loss? And remember, that is where the bank traders, institutional traders, will first target. That is their first target. They first target the stop losses of a lot of traders. That is the liquidity. That is where they're going to make some money on the stop losses. So where a lot of people are putting their stop loss, that is where the bank traders are going to first target. That is why they're going to give those pins, those spikes in those areas, because they know a lot of traders are taught put a stop loss above resistance. You know, put your stop loss below your support, above your supply, below your demand, you know, because these things are taught uh, above whatever trend line, maybe... Uh, maybe above a certain moving average. You know, those patterns, they know, they've studied. That's why a lot of traders will say, if the market has been moved in a certain trend, we know that trend is going to hold. If the market has been bullish, that trend, you, you, you should understand that if the market has been bullish for such a long time, it means a lot of traders believe that market 
uh, is stronger. That trend is strong. So we need to hold because that trend is strong. Actually, there's no such thing. The, the bank traders, they want to make a profit. If they see a lot of orders flowing in one direction and they can make more profits by moving the market in opposite direction, that is the direction they're going to take. Okay. So when you talk about a uh, rally, Obviously, the rally is about, understand that 95% of the market is moved by bank traders, hedge fund, the market makers. So those are the people actually make the market move up into the rally. And those are the, the, those are the same individuals who make the market drop, okay? If they see a lot of traders are buying, they can make the market drop. If they see a lot of traders are selling, they can make a market move up because that is where they can make a lot of money. Sometimes indecision uh, is where they're trying to decide exactly what we're going to do. Let's just go over uh, some of the, this ebook so that we can go through it together. It's only 17 pages. I believe we can finish it within five minutes. Okay. When you talk about imbalance, so imbalance is where the market is either, where the rally is obviously there's more buyers than sellers. The market is moving up. If the market is the, re the reason that the market is moving up, we all understand is because of the institutions of the market makers, the bank traders. Those are the individuals who've got the capacity or the, the amount of money to move the market to the rally. Okay. Uh, okay, let me choose. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right. If the market is dropping, it means the bank traders, they've, they've started selling whatever the market we're looking at. If the market is in the base, it just means they are trying to trap traders in both directions. That's what you're going to see. You see the market is in consolidation. It's just moving up and down, not really taking one direction. Most of the time, it's because the bank traders, sometimes they are placing some trades. You know, Remember I said earlier, the way they place their trade, they first place their biggest trade first. Why first? Is because the, the biggest goes first because the first trade, that is where they still have a lot of orders. You know, before they place a trade, they must see orders coming in. If they want to place a buy, they need to see a lot of sellers coming in. So the first time, there are a lot of orders available. So hence, they first place their first trade first. Then suddenly, they place their other trades uh, at later. So when you see a consolidation, sometimes it's because they are placing trades in certain positions that are smaller than the biggest one. Okay, it's almost like you know, if you if if and maybe another term I can put it, the 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 equilibrium place or the balance or the or the market is consolidation, you can take it as something like a base where. If you are a group of soldiers, a base is where there's a meeting, they're talking, they're planning. So they put certain maybe bombs or whatever in certain position. So even the market, even traders, market makers, they place certain other smaller trades later, but they first put their first biggest trade first because there are more orders in the beginning than they will be uh, sometime later, okay? So I think we are all clear about the imbalance. Imbalance means there are more buyers than there are sellers, meaning the market would really is going to move in the rally. So a drop is when the market is basically dropping, okay? When we talk about continuous base, it's a base that continues direction of the initial trip before the base count. A base is at this point of consolidation where the market is just consolidation. Uh, the thing is, um, obviously, there are two types of base. It's a drop, base, drop, and then you've got the rally, base, rally, okay? Where the price continue in the direction of a drop, the rally, base, rally is where the price continue in the direction of a rally. This is good, but I don't really like trading this type of a, of a base or of a, sub, of a, a supply zone if it's a drop, base, drop, or the rally, base, rally. I don't really don't like this. The reason I'm saying I don't like it is because this is the price moving in one direction, okay? It doesn't pay that much. If you go through the charts, you'll see this does not pay much. Why it doesn't pay much? It's because the price is moving in one direction, okay? If the price is moving in one direction, it means 
there are no opposing uh, positions. If the price is dropping, if there are no buyers coming through, uh, obviously you can see. If it's, so, for 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 for, for for the bank traders to make money, they, they need to see trades opposite direction, you understand? So in this way, obviously, just dropping, 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 it means there are no trades that are going opposite direction. So that's why I don't like this. It doesn't pay much, but it's, it's good to understand it because it's a way you can hold the trade, okay? And then we go to the drop base drop. Okay, drop is it's a supply set up for a sell. You get a candle. This opposing candle that tries to withstand the price in terms of going, uh, in terms of going down. So you got a drop. The price is dropping. And then you got a base. A base is an opposing candle. So a bullish candle. Um. Yes. 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 So. Yeah, it's good to add position. Yeah, they help in terms of, of adding position. But obviously, it's good to add position when the price, you know, you can see here the price is resetting your entry. See that that that, that point that is marked ent entry. It's best to add position when the price comes back to your entry. Okay, always close partial profit. And yeah, so the rally base, uh, the drop base drop is good because you can always add more positions in those trades, okay? And rally base rally is the same thing. It's just a continuous base, but this is one is for the buy. So the price rally reaches the base point and continues with the rally, okay? So the price return at the spot price is the bias and continue with the rally in the price direction. So Basically, that is it in terms of the continuous base. And this is the one that I like. I like the reversal base, rally base drop, okay? So a rally base drop is obviously a setup for a sell when the price just moves up, then reaches a point of a base. So a base can be some form of consolidation and then the price will drop, okay? You see that supply zone, then those are your entry points. Okay, so from a good market drop situation. So remember when the price, uh, the price is against rally and produce bearish and alphine candidly, and then continue the drop. Okay, you see a price going up, reaches a point of a base, a base is an opposite momentum, then the price drop. I like this because the price was moving up, rallying up. And then it reaches a point of a base where a lot of traders start entering big buys, you know. And then you see price now started to move in the balance, a balance or consolidation or sideways. And then with the with, at the highest level where a lot of traders are buying, give a spike to the upward, then the price will drop. The reason I'm saying I like this is because that drop will pay big since there were uh, orders going in the opposing direction. So this is a reversal base, rally base drop, okay? Which we do it, obviously. And then another one, obviously, is a drop base rally, where the price is an example of a drop price. It's a, it's a type of a demand for setup for a buy from a good market drop situation. The price is against the rally, produce a bullish and alphine candidates, uh, please, uh, what you can do, guys, is go through this, check the bullish engulfing on the lows and check the bearish engulfing also, bearish engulfing also on the highs, okay? So please do check those out, okay? You'll see that a lot of rally base, uh, drop base rally, uh, all these zones, you'll see that if you can find a bullish engulfing candle or a bearish engulfing candle, it pays big time. It pays big time. Those are the most important can especially if you note them on the high or also on the low. Remember, uh, those levels where you see a lot of traders have got their stop losses just below those candles. Remember, if you are a market maker or a bank trader, you, uh, most of the time they will target those stop losses. They will target those uh, those uh, breakout traders. A breakout trader is someone who says, if a market break a level, I will enter, you know. So the, sometimes they will place a, they will place a buy stop, sell stop, buy limits, or sell limits, those pending orders. And then 
they'll also have their stop losses above or below certain level. A swap zone. A swap zone is where the price does not comply with supply and demand zone. For example, it's where, uh, uh, for example, a fish buyer demand has bought fish uh, that fills consume the containers in the truck and then, and then the fish buyer goes in the town is now a fish vendor. This simply means if you were buying, let's say you were buying a fish, you know, and then obviously you put that fish in the container, whatever you do with it, and then uh, then suddenly you are you you are now a supplier. Okay, it's like going to buy some seeds of maybe potatoes or whatever fruits, and then you plant you plant whatever you plant those veggies, and then suddenly you are no longer a someone who is a uh, in demand, someone who buys, but you are now someone who supplies. So it's like a swap zone, okay? It's so it's where a, a demand becomes supply. It's where swap zone, okay? Uh, so price is consumed, and then this becomes a demand zone. So so, so that's a swap zone, okay? Uh, different base. Uh, it's a time used by price when forming a base. Sometimes less time, strong base, long time, weak base. So this is just a base. So a base, remember, we said a candle, that is opposing momentum of the movement that is going to take place. For example, this is a bull, a blue candle is meaning bullish, bearish candle is meaning bearish. Okay. So if there are more time spent forming that base, it means it's a very strong base. If there are more time, for example, here more time, it's a stronger base. But we will show you in the charts. Okay, we'll show you in the charts uh, what it means. So remember, like I said before, if the price, uh, this obviously the first one. The most beautiful place when the candle breaks that drops significantly really strong. This this shows that there were big uh, sell orders in the market. But we'll show you, we'll show you this, and then and then you've got this first time back when the price is full of orders. If the, if the price goes back to a certain level for the first time, usually that is strong. Okay, and then high liquidity zone as it was where you see a lot of uh, it's where it's where you see you know this the, the, the zone. Resistance of support where, like a charts, we just touch that level in terms of pricing. So that is uh, very. I think we're done with the ebook, but obviously we have to go step by step for every, for you guys all through the charts, okay, to see exactly what we've been talking about. Remember, I think I think uh, earlier we had um, we had a chart about what did we talk about? Okay, uh, I remember. Okay, I remember it now. Okay. Okay, so we were talking about entry and exit point. We said, do not rush into answering trades. Wait for the market to come to you before you enter. Okay, so we're going to look at this. Okay, uh, let's go through the gold. Okay, if you, this is what we call, um, can you guys, let me just confirm, can you guys see my see the charts? If you can see a chart, please just write in the chart box and yeah. Uh, yeah, on the chart box. I just want to confirm that you guys can see the charts. Okay. So this one here, you can see. This is, okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay. So what you want to do is look look at this. Okay, obviously you can use the shadows. The shadow, these are the shadows. They give sniper entries. The spikes, they always give sniper entries. You know, if you enter there on the shadow of the candles, you know, something. So this here is a bearish engulfing. So a bearish engulfing is one of the entry. Which, which base is this? So this was a rally. Okay, and then you got a base, right? So a rally, and then this is a base, right? And then a drop. Can you see? One move, come back, continue with the drop. Okay, and you can see this pays very nice. And this year, you can see there was a speed of a slowing down, but suddenly, out of nowhere, candles, bullish candle, and those bullish candles were there to trick traders. Okay. I just want you to look to the right, what is happening to the right of that bearish, bearish engulfing. Just look to the right, what is going on. Just tell me on the chat box, what do you see on the right? So 
so on your right you can see this here you can see what is going on on your right this is your right okay you can see from this from this you can see that now and the same level bearish angle from the market drop if you can check how many pips is that close to a thousand yo that's a lot of that that's good money right yeah that's good money okay but also even this candle over 300 pips good money all right so on the chart box let's see inducements to go bullish yeah okay so yeah that happens a lot of people will say this is going this is bullish and right in the zone right in the zone why because one two three the the if you look in if you're looking at this you can see that this is a bullish and then a base and then a drop on your left it's a bearish engulfing so hence we expect this market to be bearish even here right so and you can see prior this drop a lot of traders were placing their buy trade why because they were looking that this market is definitely going to break and remember and the, remember for the bank traders institution traders to place their trades they need to see opposing uh, trades or opposing order flowing into the market flooding into a market okay another thing you should note at this point at this level a lot of traders will place their stop losses right about there right about this level so right about there so when they place their stop losses it means the bank trade restitution they need to go above the highs the reason for that is because they know they are pending orders above these levels they are stop losses so they need to go up check the stop losses of those that are selling and then drop so that they can say we were right but we make some losses the reason they need to be right is for them to keep depositing money into the market if you are always wrong chances are you would be demotivated and you stop trading but if you see that at some point you are right you will deposit money and then you blow once again because your behavior is the same because you're using the same strategy all right i hope that makes sense perishing i think in the highest high are key all right are key to note okay let's just zoom in on that and you can see now the price is starting Okay, I think we've, we've done analysis on this. Okay, we've done analysis on this one. Okay. And you can see when the price starts breaking this level, we, so when I say breaking a level, I this is what I mean, this level here, this here, this here is like a base. The price will break the level, then try and retest. So on the retest, normally you can enter going short even further, okay? So we are talking about the base, we are talking about entries, and we are also, let's go over even the euro USD. Always, it's, it's very important that you always check in terms of the bigger time frame and the smaller time frame. Sniper entries are done on the smaller time frame, but patient pays pays more, okay? Patient pays more. If you are If you wanna make big money in trading, be very patient, you know, just wait for the market to, come to your point because bank traders like i said before they want to place trades in almost similar position you know if they want to place the buy or let's for example here they want to place your sell okay is there a question all right okay okay that's good thanks man so if they want to place the sell the one for example here, if they wanna, if they're placing a buy they want to place a buy here and the buy almost in the similar level the reason is is because let me just change this into okay so if they're placing a buy here see this buy came after this drop first drop and then one drop another drop another drop one two three candles of dropping suddenly there's a move to the upwards okay they this is nice why because a lot of traders started selling after they saw one drop second push third push 
they were convinced, even if, if even the candles that were there were very convincing that this is surely a cell. But after what happened, the market started moving to the upwards. So that is how you will know that right now the market is definitely going to reverse or is definitely going to go oppositions because when there's an influx of order flows in the cell, then you can see this buy is definitely going to pay, okay? So now what we're doing is we're going to look at this in terms of the higher time frame. You can see if you go this area, you can see at this level, see, there was a bit of a drop. People convinced a trend is a downtrend. The euro is in a downtrend, but suddenly when it reaches this level, okay, let me just mark the zone, marking the zone. When it reaches this zone, suddenly there was a change in perspective. Oh, in the base, there was a change, meaning in the base they were discussing, you know what? The, a lot of traders are convinced this is a bearish trend. Okay, let me just remove this. So, because they say this trend is very strong, but there's no such thing, you know, but obviously you can always go with the market structure, but they're convinced that this, after dropping below this level, then there was a drop, Within this base, there was, was a drop, a huge drop. And then there was this base formed here. Suddenly, there was, after this candle, after this candle, you can see this candle, this small candle, which was going down to this zone. Suddenly, there was bullish in movement. One candle bullish, second candle bullish. Let me just zoom into that. Uh, bullish, oh. Bullish candle, bullish candle. Okay, let me just zoom out. <clears throat> bullish candle, bullish candle. And then when you see this momentum, yeah, this here is showing momentum slowing down. What is this? Bank traders are taking profits, okay? They're going to take profits to the nearest level of supply if it's a bullish movement. And the price is going to consolidate to back to the level where they want they want to place their buy orders here buy orders here buy orders here why here is because at this level they are they're gonna get the lowest price they're gonna get what the lowest price in terms of their buy trade this is the best price to buy right why i'm saying this is where they enter their buy position is because right about the price was in a downtrend euro was in a downtrend dropping dropping suddenly there were this big drop, one, two, three, big drop. And then after those big drop, there was a change in the trend within the structure, within the space. And then big moves to the downside, a lot of orders flowing in for sell for short. Then the, and then the bank traders form a base. And then this base here, they started pushing the price up. The reason we can see, sometimes obviously you will not see this big movement to the upwards but you can certainly catch this one here, okay? You can certainly catch this one because you can see there was a lot of, there was a bearish trend, a lot of sell orders coming to the market. Suddenly there's a bullish movement. This candle is not formed by retail traders. It is formed by bank traders, by institution. They have the money to move the market in the way that they want to but we can recognize it on the charts and then we move with them. So this level, after this, bear, this bearish trend, suddenly there's this movement to the upside. So chances are we might not catch this, but we will catch this because we know the way they place their trade, they want to place their buys in the similar level because they know if you got to buy here, right? And if you got to buy another buy here, right? We've got another buy here, another buy here, another buy here. If this market moved by 20 pips, this trade will be in profit. You know, the trade you place here will be in profit. The trade you place here will be in profit. The trade you place here will be in profit. You understand? That is why, and also the trade you place here will be in profit. If it moved by 20 pips, that is why they want to place their trade, their trade in the almost similar price points. Okay? And then, yeah, that's about it, you know trend going up downwards and then suddenly the big bullish movement after the base is formed it means there were a lot of sellers now the bank traders saw that opportunity to make money because if them 
buying is going to make a lot of money, obviously, they'll move the market in that direction, okay? So remember, I said before, retail sales month on month is just showing sales that were done last month, and chances are those sales are going to be are going to be negative, which potentially can be negative for the indices. Okay, looking, let's look at the euro USD. Obviously, trend come back retest first time back. Obviously, first time back towards that level is gonna pay, and then the drop. Obviously, moving in. And this zone still in the same zone. Obviously, you can enter a uh, trade here and there. But after breaking these levels, these levels, these levels, the price touched that level. And you can see in that level, you entered your nice sell. Okay. And uh, let me just show you something. Remember? Okay. I think we, we, we can end here. I think we can end here, guys. I think we're going to close this here. Okay. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna close here. Okay. Yeah, I think we, we I think we I did show you guys the in terms of the chart analysis, the DXY, and you guys saw what happens when the price got into the demand zone. Okay. I think even the chart analysis, you definitely have a bit more understanding of it. Okay, look at this. Price got to a demand zone now. Suddenly, you know, there is some movement on it. All right. Uh, okay, no, we go, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll open up another Zoom session, then we can go through the, the feeble setting, it's okay, but we're going to 